Hello everyone and uh, welcome for this new session and new video on the Adobe Analytics, A Analytics API uh, following my uh, module which is Analytics uh, 2. So this session will be about creating a report and extracting data from Adobe Analytics directly uh, and uh, doing a breakdown. So I think this is the, something that everyone wants to know or at least see uh, in action. Uh, but before we go, um, first let's uh, recap what uh, has been done. So in the previous videos, I showcase how Python works, how the Adobe Analytics API has been designed. And then I started to run some queries uh, to do, um, uh, set up the Jupyter and set up the config file, then the instance that I need to use to actually connect to my report suite that, or to my uh, login company, sorry, not the report suite. And then we were uh, retrieving report suite, uh, as you can see here, or some dimension. And we also get the segment at some point. And uh, during the segment, we could uh, retrieve uh, more advanced information by using some parameters. So we will learn to do that. We learned some a bit of data data frame as well uh, to, to be used, and then uh, we were trying to actually update a segment. So actually, I think it was a good uh, cliffhanger, so to say, that uh, I was not successful to uh, update the segment because I was um, having limited access. I went back then and I actually I checked my um, uh, console. Uh, Adobe I.O. So what I, I said with you actually during the, I think the first video, and let me try to go back there. Yeah, exactly this one. So you have set up those pro this project that now is called Analytics and Launch. I think it, I, I renamed it since the first video. Um, and then I have actually Adobe Analytics. So actually I can try to go there. And when I go there, I could see um, which product profile has been assigned to my uh, uh, API. So looking in that, I saw that actually I had the correct uh, product profile assigned. But to make sure, we'll go to that later because it will take time to load. But to make sure, I created a new product profile which is called All In API. Um, it's not recommended to do that. So this gives me, as you can imagine, all in is giving me all the access everywhere. So I try again with this and it still didn't work. So it still didn't work. And then I, I started to think, okay, maybe there is something fishy here. Um, so you see all my uh, information, my client ID, the technical account ID, and the important piece of information that I will use later is the technical account email. Uh, I looked at the, what I was saying is, is I looked at the product profile that has been attached and you see that I have everything attached. Um, so it should work. I have all the access, everything. So I mean, all in API. And you can see the permission here is like everything has been accepted. So the way to actually uh, achieve, and I hope it will work now, the way to achieve this, uh, to update my segment, was to add a user here. And you don't even see it, but this user, let's do it again, was actually my technical account email. So we could see, in that case, I can add this. Let's see, try to look for it. So it's really hard because you need to start to look and you see that it's already been added. And I think it's my opinion that there is a problem at the moment on the Adobe API console um, setup. So what should have been done, should have been done now, what I, I'm showing you should have been done when actually I did the product profile. But if you experience the same issue, you know that you can actually go to your uh, user in whatever product profile you want and then assign the technical account email uh, that's been assigned to your uh, API. And then this will do the link like manually. Okay, that being said, uh, we will now uh, 
go forward and prove you that it's actually working. And hopefully it works. So remember when I actually um, uh, start, I, uh, I need to actually um, import the module. And now I'm doing that. So it's my first element that's going to be imported. So it would be number, number one. Uh, I won't actually create a config file because I already have a config file. Now I will actually uh, import my config file that is already being set. I will get my company ID. So, um, and now I will select the one that I want to use. And I will create my instance. You see that actually I create my instance. Uh, and now everything that is being linked is going to be in that uh, company, login company. Uh, for me, it doesn't really matter because um, I have only have one, but you could have a civil, as I was saying before. And now we don't actually care. And you see that here I can go directly to segment. And I won't actually get all the segment. I want to retrieve my, if you remember the previous uh, video, I want to retrieve my Python 2, which is my duplicate of Python. And I take the ID, uh, which is somewhere here, exactly here. And I can actually do uh, my instance get segment. Doing that. Now I can actually get the row segment. So what is inside, and you see that the description is empty. So actually I want now to say, this is my duplicate segment of Python. Uh, by selecting description and by doing that so this is an object this is a dictionary or an object we can call it an object or uh, some call it an array but i prefer not to call it an array because it's, uh, uh, it's different in python and so this dictionary I ca you can select the different keys that are here so name description id owner and so on and say okay uh, i want to change that and know if i'm actually doing a row segment you see that the description has been updated and now i will need to update that to my uh, actually ags instance and by doing that i need to create a ags update segment and if you remember you can do shift tab to see what is required you see that what is required is segment ID, so which segment you want to update, and the segment JSON. So basically what is being retrieved from getting a specific segment. So in my case, I, I already retrieved that, I updated it, and now I will push it back. And I, doing that, now before I was adding the error that is being displayed, and now actually you can see the description has been updated. So let's check that on the workspace by going to component and segment. Let's open that in the new tab. And you see that uh, my duplicate segment of Python as a description has been added. So you can imagine doing that for everything that is being um, displayed here. Uh, you can change all of that, the, the name, the description, uh, and the owner, and so on and so on. So that being said, um, now we can actually go to the report. And in order to go to the report, then we can again uh, go to the Adobe Analytics UI and I was showing you already but we will we see that again that you can get the way you could call a report directly in Adobe Analytics workspace this is done uh, by going to help and enable the debugger so I want to enable the debugger now and it tells me that it's going to show me some uh, information, additional information, and it will reload the page. So I'm doing that now. And I want to have a report of my visit for this month. By months, or no, but not by months, let's do it by 
path category. I don't know what that means. Okay, specify home page AP. I don't like this uh, specify, but let's keep it anyway. Um, so in order to retrieve this information, uh, we actually can look here at the little bug and you can see the freeform table and see the different uh, requests that have been made. So first I took the visit. So the first request that I have done here is uh, visit being dragged up. And this one is when I actually get the pass category. So I will retrieve that. And you can get the a JSON and you can directly click to copy to, uh, to clipboard. And now I'm going into my folder and I will get a new JSON file, which is going to be called, uh, I don't remember, uh, pass category, category visit. And I said it's a JSON file. So I'm going JSON, a JSON, sorry for this, but I'm opening it now. And this is what I'm getting. And now I will control V on this. And here is what the request looks like in Adobe Analytics. Let's cancel this for now and get that. So we see already that some information that we already know, but it's just making sure that this is correct. Uh, we have AGS uh, 862 data analyst as a report suite ID selected. It's this one. Uh, we don't have the staging or anything. The date range that I've been taking consideration is uh, this one. So from the first of August to the uh, from the first of Sept uh, July to the first of August, so the whole month, this month. Uh, the metric. So what metric do I have? It's a it's a array of a list of uh, different metrics. So you see that the first column, column zero, is the metric visit. And uh, it's been sold by descending. The dimension that has been used, and you see that it's a EVAR1, and it's a EVAR1 classification. So that's why I don't have, uh, I have unspecified, because I didn't classify all of the uh, EVAR1 values. And then do I count repeat instances? Yes, the limit that I want to achieve, and the page. Uh, do I want to return none? Yes, there is a return none behavior. And there are some elements, some statistic, colon my, min and colon max. Um, okay, this is this. This is done now. I will save this. And the way to, act, to actually retrieve this information in the report is actually um, my report one. Let's call it like this. And to do AGS get report, get, and then tab, so you can actually, and you see that I get a get report, and let's see what they need. And you can have, you have the JSON request that you can set. You have the number of results that you want to have. By default, it's 1,000. Uh, do you want to save this report? The item ID, do you want to retrieve that? And we'll see why we would want to retrieve that later on. It's uh, very useful for, I mean, it's even mandatory for breakdown. Variables uh, and some debug perspective uh, that I require at some point. Uh, then it gives you that it will retrieve you uh, data from JSON request, return an object containing, containing meta information and data frame. So let's uh, actually retrieve uh, just the one I actually uh, created now. And this is past category visit. So I'm tapping path, tab, it's auto automatically filling it, the gap. Uh, I will put variables equals true to see what actually I would I um, put it. I don't remember. And let's see if actually it's more meaningful than the last time I did it. And I hit enter now. Shift enter to actually select the next cell. Okay, I, you see that the request has been decrypted, starting to fetch data, data received, last page Status is true, and I retrieve 100% of the element that we are um, retrieved. It has been one request, and the report contains 100% of the available dimension. So this kind of uh, information is 
definitely more useful than the last time I used variables. Um, and I'll try to make that more uh, in the future. And let's look at my report one. What does it contain? So as I said, it's re uh, I mean, as it is uh, being uh, displayed, it's an object. And you see the dimension that is being used. You see the filter that are being used. If there are uh, multiple filters, so the global filter. The global filter is, for example, um, the segment that you apply on top. The metric filter, as we already discussed, is the segment that you apply on top of the field of the matrix. The report suite ID that has been uh, been used, the metrics that have been used, and the data. So data is in data, and you can imagine this is a data frame. So we could get data report one data. Oops, sorry. I just did a mistake. So I get I want to assign it to data report one, my report the data. And now I can do everything uh, that I'm supposed to do. So head, so here I already know that there is only three uh, rows. So head give me the top five. It's already working, but I want to save the head one. That is already, and I have 514 visits. Let's check that. I have 514 visits, 69 and 32. So this is basically giving me the correct nine and 32, giving me the correct numbers. So this is, this is really good. So this is uh, how you can retrieve information directly in from the Adobe Analytics 2.0's API. So as you can see, it's really um, fast. You request data and you retrieve the data directly. It's not like the old 1.4 API where you were requesting the data and you had to look for a queue for a bit of time before you, uh, that your data were prepared and you could download it. That being said, uh, so I will unfold again that this API is not made for a big amount of report or, or very important report. It can be done. Uh, we can try to actually get a more complex request, but um, do I have user ID or marketing cloud ID? Marketing cloud ID. I see the number of visits. So I see now I have 403 uh, uh, elements. So you can see I have two pages and the next page is probably three stuff uh, being displayed exactly. So I will try to uh, showcase or uh, oh, this one is done and I will try to zoom this time. It's, so I will again take the freeform table, the last one. I want to copy the clipboard again. And now then the tutorial zero, new text file, it doesn't matter. And this will be MCID visit .json up I hope you can see uh, this so I have all of the things and um, the dimension that actually I use oh actually this is good that we check because here we see the variable is dead and stay so I'm probably not using the correct request and that is very good because it's actually always a good thing to check so free from table or oh, actually it was the other way around so the fifth is the last one so i need to copy this one oh. and again i'm now copying here i know that you see that i'm using eva6 uh, in that to retrieve the information so now Let's uh, do this again. And this time I will try to, I hope it looks better on your side. My report two, get report. I 
and you can uh, you can again i think it was mc id visit design variables equal true and you need to know that the adobe analytics api 2.0 is based on workspace so any low traffic dimension that you have will not be expanded here and you will retrieve low traffic as a dimension um, there will not be any advantage of a workspace to work it's just automation that you can be uh, doing with that api so i will do the variables again because actually i quite like it and now i request and you can see in one request i could have uh, achieved it and why we have seen it why in the other in the workspace uh, ui you see that there was a 400 limitation so i have to scroll down but here i have a 1000 limitation so i could actually achieve until 1000 uh, dimension in one request so i could contain everything into one and now i can actually go my report two and directly achieve data here and as i am selecting it it is automatically uh, the data frame already selected and i can do a head on top i know you can see i can do a head i can do a tail and whatever i want with that um, so here you see that i have uh, 403 uh, element and the number of visits that been assigned to it this is uh, the easiest way so you already uh, retrieve the the JSON, you save the JSON somewhere in a JSON format, and you actually can um, upload it directly here. You could also, tr also try to change the request itself. And that's, uh, we'll see that now. And for that, I need to import a specific library, which is called JSON, JSON actually, um, to use that. And we will now see how to upload a file or load a file in Python. Uh, so with that library because our file is a json file so what a json file the json file is uh, actually an object so as you can imagine the thing that you, i have showcasing you here is an object but json is for javascript uh, language it can be used because by default uh, most of the api when they have been defined were uh, connecting to internet and javascript for as already i mean it's still uh, very used for internet connection so this is the default standard for let's say the the new api there is another format which is xml uh, that is being used and i will not recommend to, to use that because it's so much more verbose we'll see that later it's actually being used um at, at some week at some point uh, but uh most of the modern api are not being using the xml format but the json json format uh, and it's an, an object an object in python is usually a dictionary but they are not actually being the same so you can see here country pit instance it's true and true is being uh, done with the small letter small t and in python true is with a capital letter so you need some kind of translation to do that. And this is what the JSON module that I have just imported um, will do for me. But before I'm actually achieving that, I need to uh, uh, get the file. So I will get the file with doing file. Okay, open uh, MCID visit and then this will read this will tell i need to open this file in order to read this file if you do w is to write and w is to read and write and i think there is an a to append but in uh, our case we are interested in, into reading the file so i'll do that and what the json is actually uh, capable of is now if i'm if I'm actually trying to load this file, I need to load this file into a, a JSON. And then this is my file JSON. I need to read this file. So file read. So I read this file and I load it into a JSON. And I can do file JSON now. 
and you can see everything has been now uh, been integrated and you have true uh, with a capital T. The problem of this method of what I just show you is that the file now is still open in your system. So technically you still need to do file close now to actually close the file because now you don't need it. You uh, achieve the information, you retrieve the information that you wanted. But I won't do that this way because this is quite, uh, you, you see that it takes uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, elements. You need to do one of the after the other and you always need to think to close the file because if you try to access the file, otherwise they will be telling you, oh, uh, you already have it open and so on and so on. So in order to avoid that, I want to, because this series is also to teach you a bit of Python and how to use Python and with hopefully the best practices or the one I actually use and I feel are the good practices or I'm following, I, I hope the good practices. If I'm not, uh, please uh, comment below and give you an appropriate uh, answer actually, commenting saying it's not the best practices, it's not very helpful. So what I'm going to do is to use the open, but with the whiz queue. Key, uh, keywords and this is exactly what I've been doing before mcid the JSON and now I say as f or as five if we want to keep the same exactly the same you you imagine or I think you understand now that this is storing it in in variable and if I want my variable to be called blah I can still call it blah and it will still be the file uh, being attached to it and what that with uh, will uh, give us is that through that op uh, through that option or through that keyword, we will be in a context, and that context is okay. We when I'm actually using this uh, method, when I'm opening this file, everything here below that is being uh, attached with the after a tab, you see that I'm automatically being retrieved to a tab, is done with the file, and when you exit the tab, uh, you are going to automatically close the file. So you don't have to take care of closing the file. This with keyword will take care of that. And let's keep blah for the sake of the uh, showcase of this uh, blah keyword. And I would say, okay, now my JSON file or my JSON data is going to be JSON loads. So loads. Uh, the blah dot with and by doing that it works JSON data works and you can actually uh, see that everything works and uh, now we don't have to take care of the close so this is the best practice to use file uh, in Python um, I mean you may have some very uh, specific uh, need to do it differently, but normally 99% of the time I'm doing this and I wanted you to know. So we could imagine that what I've been doing for the segment before changing the elements here uh, can be done also by uh, actually changing the element here uh, as well. Um, so let's imagine it's a bit maybe unclear what I'm saying, but if I take metric container actually I think you can do tab and it will automatically fill yep it is and you can see that okay metric containers contain metric that contains uh, a list here and the list has only one element so I could look now for AGS get metrics and let's have a look at that and we can actually try to add new metrics here uh, add get metrics and let's say I hope is giving me let's have a look at the signature list of metric string column to simplify output return the data frame so I can already say okay give me a head of this afterwards uh, oh yeah I need the report suite ID and I already have that here uh, that up because metrics differ by report suite ID if you are really working at the real native. So up here we have, and let's take the metrics bounce rate. I think it's really good. 
um, you can have the bond spread per uh, marketing uh, cloud ID, so the visitor ID. So in order to do that, now I will do actually JSON container, metric container, and inside we know that there is metric, metrics, and this is a, a list, so I will append something like this. So it will be column one, the ID will be metric bounce rate. And I will sort by, yeah, descending, doesn't matter. After that, I want to actually see my JSON data and let's take the metric to see if it has been correctly done. So yes, you see that now I have a metrics, I have a column zero and I have a column ID one. So this gives me uh, the information that I want, hopefully, and let's, uh, let's have a look when I'm doing the query now. Um, so my report three is going to be HES get report. And now I want to have my JSON data being sent. So I don't need to call a specific file or to save a specific file. No, I can actually already work only in Jupyter. Um, now that I have, uh, get, I have got the metrics, the definition of the report itself. So let's try that. And let's try to directly, hopefully it works, get the data head. It's probably going to be, yeah, let's see. I'm actually not sure what it's going to be. Let's see that. So now I'm not doing any um, description, but oh, you see, metric bounce rate. Oh, it's not that good because it's looking at one, so 100%, but um, my, my visitors are bouncing quite a lot. But anyway, uh, that's already a, a way for you to see that uh, you can add or yeah, modify your request. So you create, that's what my recommendation is to create something through the UI because it's easier to see what you're doing and then you try to modify it. This is the 101 of how you modify the things with Adobe Analytics API 2.0 from my point of view. You can of course have different point of view and want to do something different. I'm also thinking to develop a way to create um, your own uh, a request for the report, like a kind of a class that helps you do this automatically within Python. Uh, but that's not uh, an easy way. Uh, so let's see about this uh, in, in Twitter. But right now, I think this is already a good start. And let's tackle the big topic that has been lying around for some time. And let's do now a new one. Let's say countries. That's perfect. Country. And countries, let's do region. Like this. So when doing that, there have been two calls at the very least that have been done. One is the first one that's giving me the different countries. And the second one is giving me the region with the visit and the visit as a metric filter United States. So now I can actually go here in the debug from table and this time not doing mistakes. I have actually two calls that have been done uh, one after the other, as you can see. And the first one is going to be copy clipboard. Going to be here at countries. List. JSON. So now in this one, I will copy paste. Oh, uh, I click on the wrong. Copy to clipboard. Sorry. Oh, this one is the one I want. Yeah, perfect. So see, I have variable your country and limit 400. So actually, the idea behind it is that I'm overwriting the limit 400 to 1000. 
So technically, it's possible in the UI to do that. Uh, for some reason, the UI is not doing 1000, but it's doing 400. Um, I think it's for limited. I mean, basically, you should not do this kind of report in the UI because you see 1000 row, you probably will never see the end of your report. Okay, I take a sip of water. So this is my first one. And now I want to have the breakdown and the breakdown is actually preform table and the one after. So no, not do the same mistake, copy the quick board, this one. And now I'm going to do new JSON and let's call it country breakdown.json and let's look at this so you can see that now I have the global filter is still the same the, the metrics are now actually the same with the column 0 being metric visit filter 0 but you see that there is now a filter, metric filter that's being applied to it. And this type of filter is a breakdown. And you see that I'm actually using the dimension variable geo country. So the dimension that is being uh, used for my breakdown. So not the, not the one being used. Sorry, not the one being used for my breakdown, but the one being used on top of my breakdown. So the geo region, the geo country, sorry, is used as a filtering here and the region here is being used as a dimension. So the dimension is your region and the country is being used in order to make sure that I only see the visit in that case on the metric visit for that country. Otherwise it would not make sense. And you see that there is a limit of five that, uh, that has been applied here because we, when we do a breakdown automatically it's five. I think we can uh, up to 400 again. Um, and again for visibility purposes. So there is 25 actually region of the United States that's going to uh, see my uh, blog at some point. So now let's try to automate that to do a report for all of the country that I do have. Sorry for that. Um, yes, I will uh, now demonstrate how you can directly uh, retrieve this information, the region, for all of the countries. So I took advantage of the um, post that I did to open the door to actually prepare a bit uh, on what I want to do next. And uh, so it's faster for everyone. So I created a new section and then I directly get the country request that I will show you into the different um, variables. So country request and breakdown request directly. So if I'm running this now and uh, I look at the country request, you can see now that I have the uh, element with the different settings. So here, variable geo country and the breakdown uh, request is now done with the different metrics, uh, metrics visit, I mean the metric, and with the breakdown itself. As you can see here, uh, limit five. So I will now try to do that the countries itself, countries, let's call it country data. So if this FGS get report, I'm going to pass that dictionary directly into it, and that will give me my object. And I didn't ex exactly explain why I, I, I created the object country data. But it's important if you want to have uh, the different information that are contextual to your um, request. Like if you get only the reports, you don't know what was the time frame, you don't know which of the reports yet, you don't know what was the, I mean, you know what was the dimension and the metric, but um, the idea is to give you more context if you want to have that in a separate file. 
uh, and keep track of what kind of report and, and request you, uh, you're creating. So you can see here all of my data uh, that are being retrieved uh, directly. And from there, what we will do, we will extract the different uh, country. And what I need to do as well is to get the item ID. And this is what is available. If I'm looking here into the request, you can see that I have item ID. So let's see that here it's a Boolean that should be written to true. This time I will not display. And let's do directly complete data. Data to get only the data from the head to only get the top five of this and see how it looks like. And this will be required for my uh, uh, rival breakdown here. Uh, you can see that uh, item ID is being set here. So I'm going to do that. And help, as you can see, I have an extra column that gives me all of the ID. Directly. And you remember I was doing the first breakdown on the IC state, and you can see the item ID for the IC state is actually uh, ending, let's say ending by, by 99.22. And this is what my breakdown request is about. So uh, let's do that now and uh, do a for loop, because what we want to do is to do a for loop for all of the countries and get the report itself. So let's say uh, for uh, the country, so let's say for the country, start uh, in data, and then you can say group, which is uh, a data frame method to iterate over different rows and that gives you two things actually if you look at this uh, as a, a shift tab is not actually working and i wanted to show you that so actually i will extract this data frame so we have a better view on this so let's say the f countries the data from countries the country data and now i can do it here and now I have access uh, to this. It's easier for Jupyter to know. And it returns it yells. So it's actually yelling the information. So it returns the information index. Uh, the index of the row and the data as a series. So if I'm doing that, actually, I need to have something for the uh, index. I can do index country. When you don't require this information at all, uh, you do the normal best practice in Python is to use uh, underscore and here you see that it's not going to get the country but it will get you the row I, I always try to have meaning on my dimensions or my variables so that I know what's going on and now let's do a print a row of a variable your country oh sorry that so it's a series, so because it's a series, you can actually access different elements directly. And let's do that. And you can see that directly I can access all of this. So now, uh, what we want to do is to retrieve everything. And for that, I will get them into an object. So let's say uh, country report is going to be an object like this. And this will host all of the data per country of the top region for this country. And now my country region will be. Let's get the information already. So to guess what we will need to do, we will get the breakdown report. And actually, I want to have my. Well, let's not share my, but. Um, Temporary, so let's say temp breakdown request equals breakdown request. And if I'm doing that, I'm going to copy the overall dictionary into a new dimension. And while I'm doing that, actually, I want to check that what I'm copying 
is just not the reference of the um, IDE, but the whole element itself. So let's try to do that by sample count equals based on request. So that works. Now we have the same, and let's check if they are the same now. Break down request. It's true. You know, let's say if they are referencing the same information, like the problem that I want to avoid is that they are exactly the same. This is exactly what I want to avoid because then if I actually do a change here, this will change here. And I don't want that to be a, a, a repercussion of what I'm going to change here in my loop uh, to the overall breakdown request. So I'm going to need to copy it through a, something that's called uh, a git copy. Let's copy everything. And let's do an import. Uh, Actually, we need to say from from copy import deep copy. We do that, and this let's actually read because it's always annoying. Um, from this, we can now say okay, deep copy of breakdown request. I'm oh, sorry, I need to actually do that here. And so I'm running this. Now I have a deep copy of it. So if you look at this, they are still the same, but are they exactly referencing the same information? No, no, no. If, now, if I'm actually changing this, I'm not going to change this one. They are not referencing the same. This is the difference between, between equals and is. Is exactly the same object and equals like they're referring the same information. And, uh, and that works. So now I want to actually do that. This is all because I'm doing uh, best practices. I don't think you would encounter such an issue in that scale of the report, but I want you to have the best understanding of why, what you need to do to have something proper and, and, and nice that can scale for all the uh, type of report. So I'm doing this. Then I will say that. I uh, break down request. We will need to change this economy ID. So I'm going to do it. So this is going to be my metric container. So let's have a look of where it is. So ten break down request because we already have created it. Metric container. And yeah, I don't have anything here, so let me continue to the metric filter. And the metric container, metrics. And this is what I was trying to do. And yes, this is its exactly it, and we will need to, because there is different elements, but we will need to um, uh, access the first. It could be that you have several segments stacking on top, but for our, in our case, it's not the case, so we're not doing that. I have this, and if I'm doing that, it in my D, then I have the correct information. So, what I want to do now is exactly my metric at MID, I want that to be equals to my work. So now you see that we have changed our report so it can dynamically go through all of the countries, check the add time ID and assign it in the JSON request that we need to have. So this element is always changing. And when this is ready, then now I can actually use that to say my data. Top of data is a GS object report and temp breakdown request. Now my country report, so I know that I want to have my row country. So this is going to be to give me in my object 
uh, layer that is a country, and I want to assign that my data. But only the data. I don't actually care for the rest. Okay, so now when we will run this, this uh, request, uh, we will see that. Let's, let's do some print to actually see what we are doing. What we are doing. Uh, let's do a app screen so you can actually see. We now running. This, so we will see which country are being requested each time. And this object will store all of the final data that we retrieve. And this is how we will do a breakdown for all of the dimension. Oops, sorry, it's not here. For all of the dimension that we had in the previous report. We see that now we're running the first. Uh, item which was in the United States. This is India now, Germany, United Kingdom, Canada, no running France, Spain, Singapore, Italy. And remember that when we do that, um, we have the uh, problem, the possible problem that we run into a throttle a limitation we can only do 12 requests per six seconds or 120 requests for one minute so if you encounter that you, you may need to deal with that normally my module already take care of that if this problem appears it automatically pause and uh, start again in one minute so it pause for one minute to make sure that you can have a fresh result uh, to do that and now we have all of this information and let's look at my country report Object. You can look at the keys and you see that I have all of those information here. And let's look at my country for United States. Oh, here. And you see California, Texas, Georgia, 28, 22, 21. 28, 22, 20, 20, actually. So it's not actually giving me exactly the same number. That's very interesting. Then 12 and 11. Um, let's see to refresh and, and press OK. But that's possible because since then, actually, yep, you see that uh, since then, the, actually, the data has changed, and this is really very really good to see. Uh, and now we have all of our uh, different 24 uh, elements. So that's all you do a breakdown, and that's why I, I, I feel this API is not made for that purpose. I would encourage you to either use data warehouse and to extract the data directly there. But I know that there are some limitations uh, because uh, you don't have calculating metrics, you don't have some advanced segment in data warehouse. Um, but yeah, this is how you can achieve uh, extraction of uh, breakdown um, elements for the whole report. I hope this video was useful. I think it was one of the most wanted videos that uh, uh, I made, or I, I, I think it is. And um, let me know if you have any questions, any comments, and uh, I tell you happy coding now.